Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, so, how are you? Apa khabar semua? Oh, very good. How about others? That one is, is it Christopher? Uh, how about other, other students? You guys feeling well? Yeah, morning, doctor. Yeah, morning, everyone. So today we're going to continue very fast. Uh, I'm going to discuss about a, ver a very important chapter. Uh, but before I actually continue with this explanation, I just wondering. Um, basically, last week I advised you to complete the BMC. Am I right? Betul. Semua dah buat belum? Have you guys submitted the BMC? Yes. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, ada dua orang lagi tak submit. So, dia tengok, there, there, there are only 23 out of 25 of you submitted the BMC. Though, I, 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 uh, this is actually a group work. But, I really need all of you to submit lah. Okay, that's one part. Okay, so the next stage that I want to look at, uh, basically, I want to know the progress. Later lah, towards the end of the class, I want each team to update me the progress of your project, okay? Uh, later, I'm going to share as well. Uh, please remind me to share the previous assignment and I'll second to Okay, so basically, today we, we, we cannot deny when we venture into a business, uh, we cannot avoid uh, to face some kind of risk, okay? But people would say that, okay, higher risk, higher return. That's normally the basic principle when it comes to investment. So, operating a business is like an investment and not all investment basically having a good return. Some investment might be failed due to the uncertainty or this is what we call as risk. Okay? So, here, I'm going to start with this kind of quote by uh, Confucius. Our greatest glory is not in never falling but in rising every time you fall. So, having said that, uh, regardless, I mean, in our life, uh, even though we're not related with the business, but in our normal life, we're going to face some kind of problem or issues, okay? So, it's not about how many times that we fail, it's actually how we overcome those failures and continue our journey. Okay, what determines the success of entrepreneurial, wait, entrepreneurial, uh, such, uh, the success of entrepreneurial effort and how they can be managed. A new venture that create a novel solution to a problem will be subject to uncertainty of outcome. So when we talk about uncertainty, definitely it might refer to the risk that we need to mitigate. Okay, an action in uncertain market is sure to experience a risk of delay or loss. So it is the entrepreneur's task to reduce and manage or risk as much as possible. I think when when we discuss uh, this chapter, definitely this related with uh, we can relate this situation with current situation, which is pandemic COVID nineteen. Am I right? Betul. Okay. So many businesses are much affected with this kind of uh, scenario. Okay. And and I'm not pretty sure, but but currently people um even if you read the news in the UK right now. Uh, there's kind of new wave whereby they just discovered uh, a new opening, a new a new open a new a new symptom of COVID nineteen whereby they cannot simply detect it and then it spread. Uh, the matter super spreader lah. It, it, it is actually uh spreaded very fast among the community. Okay, so this is actually some kind of risk lah. Okay, so do you can you give any example about risk before we uh, further discuss, guys, can you relate with any scenario what kind of risk normally a business uh, might face in sustaining the business? Hello? Can you get my, do you understand my question? Yes, understand. Yeah. Yes, would you please give some response? Li Ping. Li Ping? 
I'm calling Polly Ping. Hi, Doctor. Hi, yes. I need to get uh, your feedback or perhaps some example. When we discuss about race, what do you think that any other race that might be experienced by the business organization? My room. Are you out? In my room. Oh, at, at your room. Okay. So, Lipin, will you uh, give some feedback with regard to this scenario? What are other kind of risks that might be experienced by the entrepreneurs? Can you think? Can anyone give the feedback? Anyone? We have 20 of you here. Yeah, economic crisis. Thank you very much, honey. Economic crisis. Okay, what lack, else? Yes. Lack, uh, lack of expertise. Maybe like software. You don't have software developer. Mm -hmm. Then it's a crisis for a company or maybe you need some expertise but you didn't find it. Okay. Good. Okay, I didn't check up. Yeah, very good, Hazel. But we're going to explain that later. Economic crisis, political crisis, uh, environmental risk, yeah, a lot of things. Lah. Okay, so so as you aware, there are a lot of factors whereby this is actually the role of the manager or entrepreneurs to manage or we simply call it mitigate the risk rather than is affect the operation or sustainability of the business. Okay, so risk is the chance or possibility of loss. So as an entrepreneur, you need to project, you need to, uh, what we call it, foresee what kind of uh, risk that you might be facing. It's not only with regard to the losing of talent, like being said by Hazel. So losing of talent still actually, you can manage it, okay? But there are, there are other things that most probably you need to think of because losing of talent, simply you can find a new talent. That's one part. Um, and then uh, the second aspect that perhaps uh, you need to think of, when we talk about risk, there are some risks. Uh, we call it like business risk, which is can be easily mitigated or perhaps easily transferred. For example, when we talk about the risk that can be transferred, so that's the reason why insurance business is one of the good business. Because of what? Kenapa insurance is actually part of mitigating the risk? Kenapa? Can you give example, guys? Okay, for example, uh, saya pula bagi example. You all bagi example, please. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just give you some kind of risk which is could be transferred this is normally we refer to insurance so could you give some example what are uh, insurance what are uh, any uh, what, 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 uh, what basically the type of insurance that you think related with business operation can anyone contoh boleh bagi tak guys saya dah bagi dah ni contoh boleh bagi contoh Property loss or damage? Kebakaran. Oh, thank you. Ya Allah, you only cakap lah dalam guna microphone. Saya tak baca. Okay. Okay, yes. Kebakaran. Correct. Yes. This is some kind of risk that could be mitigated. Correct. In the in doing the business. Okay. For example, uh, when we talk about property damage, uh, and then maybe some of the business could also um, take insurance for the natural disaster. Okay. Logistic, correct. Okay. Especially kalau dalam bidang logistic, dia ada dia punya risk, uh, accident, for example. Okay. Uh, kebakaran. Okay. Okay. So, this is actually why it's very important for you to project. Even you yourself, you need to, uh, 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 what we call it, project some kind of risk. Okay. Saya rasa saya pernah beritahu kot sebelum ni. 
Even you yourself, I really encourage you, if you actually started your career later, you start working, please make sure that you try to protect yourself first. After you having sufficient savings, and the next part that you need to do is actually protecting yourself, okay, by buying insurance. I'm not an insurance agent, but I, I believe that is such, uh, what we call it, um, uh, such a need lah nowadays, okay? And regret is the amount of loss a person can tolerate, okay? Uh, similarly, when you run a business, you need to wear, okay? Uh, it's not uh, immediately you're going to get the profit, okay? Um, for the first few months, most probably, you're going to operate your business, um, uh, what we call it, uh, by generating loss, not profit. That means you need, to bear some loans for the first few months in operating the business. However, you need to actually have this kind of what we call it, um, uh, what we call it, uh, affordable loans. Uh, that's actually the term that I normally use. That means when you want to venture into a business, try to set how much the affordable loss that you could uh, endure during the first uh few months of your business operation. You faham tak maksudnya? Okay, you cannot expect the moment hari ni you actually venture into the business, by end of the month, immediately you will get profit. Not necessarily. So that's actually what we call as regret or ataupun affordable loss. How much uh, loss that you can endure before you actually start to making profit. Okay, I think that's quite um, what we call it uh, practical when you run a business. Okay, so this is actually the process when we talk about risk. Okay, there are certain kind of things that you need to think of. For example, in terms of hazard, level of total investment, variability of outcome is very uncertain. Though most probably on the business plan, you're going to start that during the first month, you're going to generate profit. But that totally depending on um, the real market. Okay, how market react with your product. Anticipated. And then there is another factor. Uh, this is the perceived risk. That means when you run a business, you look here. First, you need to look in terms of hazard as well as the variability of outcome. Whether you need to inject a lot of capital in starting the business. And then how are you going to make sure that you're going to receive this ROI? That means you're going to get the return, okay, from your investment. Okay, so that's actually we put under the perceived risk. Okay, you need to project that. And then the second aspect, the anticipated return, risk adversity of team, fit of team competency and ventures. Uh, another uh, important issue when you run a business is basically your team, particularly for tech-based company because you cannot operate alone. For the tech-based company, normally it's like a combination of Talents, okay, some of you may be very good in terms of technical, some of you in accounting, some of you in marketing, okay. Uh, saya ada suruh tengok cerita startup kan? Siapa tengok cerita startup? Cerita startup? Okay, because um, last weekend I managed to complete all series, all season and I think that... Um, what uh, you know, what what I learned uh, it, it, what what basically being portrayed, being actually projected on the startup uh, Korean series to memang is actually tepat lah, okay. Whereby during this kind of thing, you are the conflict and then you are the risk and someone basically hack your business, and then you need to must be having this kind of backup, okay. Ada siri yang ke lima belas ke empat belas, I couldn't remember which episode whereby they try to develop this kind of... Uh, it's very interesting because they started to portray that in Korea, okay, which is... I'm, 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 I'm very skeptical it's happening in Malaysia yet, okay. Uh, they started to test autonomous vehicle. What is autonomous vehicle? Uh, anyone? Guys, autonomous vehicle. Okay, so so basically, uh, it's actually autopilot car or any kind of vehicle lah. Okay, uh, uh, so basically from from the story you boleh nampak lah how they're going to develop that there's some kind of uh, 
programming uh, that they need to develop the algorithm to make sure that they can minimize the test and they say very very interesting because uh, Saipun actually do not know the framework yet okay um to to develop this kind of thing kalau you tengok from that siapa te, siapa tengok cerita ni cerita startup ni siapa siapa berjaya tengok actually it's totally drama lah tapi drama but they 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 try to uh what we call it uh add some flavors uh some flavors of uh, of of business ada tak kat sini tengok cerita startup anyone tak ada eh okey tak apalah Okay, so from from that startup, basically, uh, saya realise actually before you can get a full license to develop that kind of uh, what we call it technology, you after you actually conduct this kind of uh, what we call it uh, uh, programs. I mean, uh, you develop this kind of uh, technology. They they buat the new program where they they basically test. And then they need to get approval in terms of temporary permit to operate this kind of uh, car, okay, autonomous car. So that, that's quite interesting. That means they are ready, okay, to, I think Korea is much more advanced. Undeniably, they have a lot of technology, okay. So having said that, if you look here, they, they have actually have a framework. Even for you to test the technology, they have the expert. So having said that, um, you can think about it and then they can hack and then how basically they try to Uh, what we call it, find a new talents again, okay. Uh, what being said by Hazel is very true. Losing a talent, particularly the main uh, people who are going to operate the uh, technology, for example, macam dalam cerita tu, basically the programmers or perhaps the, apa namanya, the engineers lah, the, the, the IT engineers, they actually went to uh, competitors' company. Ah, and then ada uh, hiccup dia before they went to another company, the hack uh, the current company. And then, uh, tu lah, saya nak cerita, which is very true lah. You need to see, you need to, to expect that kind of phrase. And then they didn't have any backup. Fortunately, uh, they managed to retrace back the file. Okay, so kalau you tengok dekat sini, uh, barulah you 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 try to decide new venture choice, whether you, uh, and then it's very attractive new venture, barulah you proceed with the decision whether you want to, venture into the business okay so this is actually we talk about economy of scale uh, can anyone give example when we talk about economies of scale basically this is a expected based on the concept <coughs> that larger quantities of units sold will result in reduced per unit cost could you give example the scenario of economies of scale anyone here faham tak maksud economy of scale ni supposedly When you learn economic before, you have learned about this concept. Can anyone elaborate and give example of, uh, with regard to economy of scale? Anyone? Iqbal? Iqbal Azhar, are you here? Iqbal? Yes. Iqbal, yes. Do you understand the concept of economies of scale? Mm. Uh, they increase their output level, but they they okay. need to add cost advantage. Could you give example? Example. Uh, example. What? Nurul Iza, tak apa. Saya, saya suruh Nurul Iza. Nurul Iza? Nurul Iza. I'm calling for Nurul Iza. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, my first question. Do you understand the concept of economies of scale? Yes. So, could you... Uh, okay, can you explain and give an example? Uh, economy of scale is like uh, the company produce large quantity of hmm. goods to reduce cost per unit. Okay. Boleh bagi example? Uh, I can't really think about the specific product, but it's like how China is doing right now. They focus on economic of skills. How what? How? China doing right now. Oh, okay. 
So so but yeah, we we are talking in terms of company. Okay, for example, when we try to look in terms of Proton and Toyota, which do you think they have economy of scale? Anyone? Proton. Okay, which Toyota. Company? Why Toyota? Why not Proton? Iqbal lah, tanya Iqbal balik lah. Iqbal, why why people say that Toyota have more economy of scale rather than Proton? Um, Toyota is worldwide, right? Okay, so? Um, Toyota worldwide, okay, lagi, lagi, lagi. Proton dalam Malaysia je, tak, tak banyak lah ni kan. Okay, Akmal, I want to get opinion from Akmal. Uh, maybe because Toyota managed to uh, produce its its car parts, maybe. But meanwhile, Proton need to buy uh, to buy part each of its parts. I mean, mm. okay. So that that's very true lah for you. So at least you faham. For example, like Proton. So that's the reason why the price of Proton basically much more expensive. Simply because the operation is smaller than uh, what we call it uh, Toyota. So for Toyota, they have a bigger uh, manufacturing plant and then they're operating, like you said, all over the world. They have like the punya facilities in Thailand. Okay, so that's the reason why in terms of the cost, you basically can reduce it. For example, it's like this. If you actually sell it, uh, buying product from Macik Jual Goreng Pisang, contohnya, you, Macik, you, you beli kuih kat tepi jalan, and then you complain, oh, harga dia lima, ma- mahal sekarang ni, 40 sen, 50 sen. Okay, but the thing is, you need to actually see the condition of the uh, the small traders lah, okay, the informal uh, entrepreneurs, whereby they need to buy, for example, not guni, they tak beli in box, they actually buying the uh, the flour, the ingredients, basically in small quantity, whereby the price will be much more uh, expensive. So that's the reason why when you buy Proton, basically it's much more expensive than other imported car. Okay, imported car, kalau kita ada dia punya, if we don't actually uh, impose this kind of tariff or perhaps tax, okay, uh, or levy kepada mereka, so basically imported car much more cheaper. But due to the, uh, what we call it, our country policy, whereby we want to protect our national car, so that's the reason why Proton, Dia, dia mahal tapi nampak macam murah sebenarnya but in reality basically you boleh nampak lah so this is what we call as economy of scale the second aspect that you need to know is with regard to scalability it refers to how a big firm can grow in various dimension to provide more services though we can deny okay when we talk about big company um Definitely, they have more capabilities, okay? So, that's actually the condition that need to be aware by a small SMEs, by small medium enterprises, whereby whatever new technology that are being proposed or developed by them to the market, definitely a big company going to retaliate by on developing a similar or better product, okay? Because they have more chances to scale up the business, okay? Uh, so, dalam business, memang basically, uh, you need to aware. There's one one time whereby you cannot basically comfortable with your current condition. You always need to find opportunities. Okay, so next, we actually talking in terms of the network economies, which is, is referring to the industry perspective. It's a rise industry where a network of complementary product is the determinant of demand. So this is what we call as a network effect, okay? Because nowadays, many of the technology or product innovation or innovation product, basically, they are much more uh, supported or perhaps influenced by the complementary product, okay? For example, when we talk about apps, okay, and mobile phone, okay? So this kind of things basically complement each other. For example, right now, people are so into this kind of social media. So that's the reason why there are so many apps, editing apps, whereby it previously is very expensive and complicated for you to run it. But nowadays, you can simply download any apps. 
And in order to, to, to respond to this kind of apps, definitely many smartphones uh, come up with the good camera punya features. That means they know that people nowadays want to have this kind of good look. Okay, if you actually taking the photo, for example, like you, you can simply uh, make, uh, you can simply beautify your face. You can simply make your face, apa uh, namanya, uh, what we call it, shining, for example, okay? So, the reinforcing characteristic of positive loop exhibiting network effect. So, this is actually the example lah. So, basically, uh, the loop showing to you that the bigger the network, the better your business punya expansion and operation, okay? So, the next part, uh, this is actually a very good concept. In the business, I mean, uh, particularly in investment uh, knowledge, high risk will... Uh, contribute to higher return, okay? And I believe nowadays, uh, the trend in Malaysia, they started to invest uh, in stock market. Betul, kalau you tengok, uh, if you actually listen to radio, uh, dia ada promote. Siapa nama yang, siapa sini main saham? Dia satu yang nama dia, tak, 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 tak handsome, tak apa yang penting kaya, something like that, dia punya quote. Okay, that means they actually want to encourage you to to do the business by uh, by investing in terms of stock. But um, you can faham, bila you dengar, orang lain boleh buat, so it doesn't mean that you basically can achieve similar return. Okay, because when we talk about stock, particularly this is what we call as blue chip stock. Blue chip ni maksudnya stock yang harga mahal. Contohnya like in Malaysia, stock from Petronas, stock from uh, Aziata Group, stock from Maxi, stock from, uh, there are a few things lah, TNB, okay? So, this is actually we call as blue chip uh, punya uh, stock, okay? Though, it's actually representing a very a very good return, but you need to remember, higher return representing higher risk, kalau you tengok dekat sini. Okay, so having said that, in the future, even like in the business, whatever investment that you want to make, make sure you basically calculate the risk. Okay, having said that, to calculate the risk, you need to uh, to, to make this kind of scenario. Okay, that means in one year, how much money that you can get? What happened if some kind of political crisis happened? What happened if uh, pandemic COVID-19 or another pandemic happened? What happened if economic fall down, okay, again and again? Because uh, when we talk about economic cycle, you might aware every 10 years or every decade, basically, uh, the world going to face some kind of economic crisis, okay? And then nowadays, we're also basically talking in terms of international perspective, okay? Uh, particularly the... Uh, what we call it, the rivalry between China and uh, US, okay? Uh, and then, uh, what happened in the US right now, uh, we also need to predict because uh, in the US, they, they just appointed uh, president-elect, okay? Definitely is going to change the way uh, the market uh, operate right now, okay? Because during um, Donald Trump, yes, during Donald Trump regime, so basically, uh, they actually make a close door. They don't want to make some uh, any kind of close connection with China as well as Middle Eastern uh, countries. Kalau you remember, uh, when uh, Donald Trump been appointed, within few months, he started to ban a uh, few countries, okay, to travel and then there are a few things lah, okay. And then this kind of thing is going to actually change due, due to the appointment of new president, for example. Okay, so saya pergi laju, the entrepreneur seeks to manage risk and attain economy of scale, scope and network while achieving scalability of the business. Having said that, for you to scale up, for you to grow your business, definitely you, you need to manage risk. And at the same time, how are you going to achieve this kind of economy of scale and then broaden your scope as well as your network, okay? Okay, so I think that's actually for this topic. We're going to take a break, five minutes, boleh, guys? Hello everyone. Hello. So we're taking um kita akan start semula dalam pukul 10 suku lah, 10 suku. So those yang rasa lapar, you just grab um roti ke apa and then we going to continue uh, uh quarter past 10. Boleh pukul 10 suku. Okay? Okay guys, we taking break for a while.
Okay guys, we going to continue with chapter 7. Are you guys ready? Dah sedih ke belum? Guys? Tak yes. guys, you ready or not? <laughs> dah sedih. Semua dah ada belum? Yes, guys, are you guys ready? I'm going to continue with chapter 7. Chapter 7, basically, uh, is very important for your assignment uh, because later you're going to develop this kind of business plan but not in a traditional way. Nanti saya akan tunjukkan example, I give you the guide. Saya rasa macam dah ada e-learning, I mean in terms of the guide and then you need to actually develop a business plan uh, based on your project which is your, apa namanya? Uh, your mobile apps, okay? So this is some of the information that you need to add on your the mobile apps. So the method of enterprising is to plan with uh, audacity and execute, uh, execute your business with Vigor. Okay, having said that, okay, do you, uh, from your opinion, what basically the main reason we need to prepare the business plan? That means what basically the main reason entrepreneurs need to prepare a business plan? Anyone? Ah, uh, Doktor, saya nak cuba. Boleh, please. Okay. Ah, uh, Dia nak susun strategi perniagaan dia. For now and the future. That's very good. What else? What else? Anyone? Yeah, you are talking in terms of planning. Okay. For now and for future, that's very true. So what else that basically... Uh, the reason why, okay, entrepreneurs need to prepare the business plan. Hey. What else? Come on. Saya tak kena panggil nama ke? Tadi siapa cuba tadi tu? Oh, susahnya. Uh, okay, saya lah, doktor. Lah. Siapa awak? Saya mana dia? <laughs> ah, kejap kita buat, uh, kita buat apa namanya? Uh, kita buat housekeeping punya sesi kejap. Mana saya punya webex ni, ya Allah. Sebentar je. Okay, ha, baru. Okay, housekeeping. Semua buka kamera. Saya nak tengok muka. Come on. Everyone, please open your camera for now. Saya lupa nak buat. I supposedly uh, make it uh, before continue. Okay, hi Hazel. Hi Akmal. Akmal ni macam-macam tempat you pergi. Hebat. Okay. Hi Mariway. Hi, hi Naufal. Nafal, kenapa muka awak sedih? Why your face look so gloomy? Ha, smile. Ah, you look different, Christopher. You just cut your hair. Is it? New hairstyle. Very good. Okay, where is one Naziha? Aina Ardina, Faris Marijan, Atika Alia. Okay. Hai Iqbal. Hani, mana Hani? Wah, uh, Christopher, uh, are you in Indonesia or at campus? Cannot hear. I cannot hear your voice. Unmute. Unmute. Ah, Faiz. Faiz. Are you in campus? Oh, I should pay visit. Okay. And then we, we should have coffee together. <laughs> Sabah. Sabah. Where are you right now? Campus as well? Yes, doctor. Campus. Oh, some of you at the campus. Okay. Who else? Where is Fazli Idris? Um, saya tak ingat lah muka Fazli ni. Fazli yang mana? Yang kurus-kurus tu ke? Where is Fazli? Saya tak ingat Fazli ni macam mana? Arfan? Mana Arfan? Arfan. Zanita ni. Saya tak ingat dah muka Zanita. Please, please. Uh, I, I, I tak minta you buka kamera lama. Sekejap je. Okay. Shikin Diana. Uh, saya, saya tak ingat Shikin Diana. Ah, saya tak ingat. Kalau saya terlanggar Shikin Dayana kat luar, saya tak tahu pun tu student saya. Mana Fazli? 
Mana Fadli? Tak nampak mana Fadli? Oh, Rosnya dah, dah, dah buka air Oh, okay oh, Okay, okay itulah awak Sorry, saya tak ingat awak siapa <laughs> Saya ingat saya ingat awak Arfan Tengok saya dah terbalik dah <laughs> Uh, Zanita Okay, hi Zanita Are you at campus or at Indonesia? Indonesia? Indonesia Mana Iza? Mana Faris? Hani mana Hani Osman? Oh, ramai tak ada ni Hani Osman uh, Nuri Iza Wow, a lot of numbers Kenapa ada number banyak-banyak tu? Is it, is it wallpaper ke apa? Ah, Mas ya. Malini. Malini mana Malini? Saya tak ingat. Saya, sorry. Saya tak ingat muka Malini macam mana. Can you see Malini right now everyone? Dah buka dah kamera. Tapi tak suka. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay lah, okay lah. Saya tak nampak Anissa Izwanis. Uh, siapa ni? Uh, Wan Nazihah. Ah, okay. Uh, okay lah. Okay lah. Thank you everyone. Kita continue. Uh, supaya saya ni nak ingat. Because because of what? I'm losing I'm losing human touch when teaching online. Okay. Uh, I don't actually ask you to open your camera all the time. It's up to you lah. Okay. I, I, I acknowledge some of you facing internet difficulties. But bila saya suruh buka kamera, you buka lah sekejap. Boleh eh? Okay. So I'm continuing. You can off your camera if you want to continue. Up to you. Okay, right now we actually talking in terms of business plan. Okay, okay. One of the big, uh, one of the main reason nowadays people basically preparing the business plan simply because they want to apply for grant. They want to apply for, for example, bank loan. Some uh, financial providers they are asking. They they asking. Uh, the entrepreneurs or the company, the SMEs to prepare the business plan. But uh, before we actually go into business plan, so that's the reason why we need to understand the concept of business model canvas. And there are few uh, government agencies as well as private agencies uh, that providing this kind of financial assistance or incentive or grant to the entrepreneurs They started to embrace or adopt the usage of BMC, when they want to select, normally they're going to ask, for example, there is one uh, agency called Teraju, so what they are doing, they're going to ask the entrepreneurs to pitch uh, about the business within three minutes. And once they go to the next level, they're going to ask the entrepreneurs to prepare the BMC and present it, okay? And then the next part, after they basically get some kind of Uh, selection, they're being selected uh, for the final stage normally uh, this is where you need to prepare the business plan, okay so that's the reason why I actually want you to end up with this one lah. that means you need to know uh, to start actually planning, okay, when you want to do a business it's very important for you to start the planning so I'm, I'm going to discuss in very quick way, I think this is Uh, one of the important process that you need to include in your, what we call it, business plan. We want to know about the opportunity. Sometimes, uh, people want to know, is it any kind of room for you to grow your business if you venture into that particular industry or sector? Okay, and then after you know this kind of opportunity, you set a vision. Okay, vision and mission. Vision is what you want to be. For example, if you venture into this kind of biotech, so you want to become the pioneer, you want to become the leader, of uh, startup in that particular industry, okay? And then we also discuss about distinctive competencies, okay? When we talk about distinctive competencies, companies or perhaps the evaluators, uh, we want to see, okay? The investors want to see to what extent you can simply get access to the resources. That means in terms of capital resources, in terms of the technology. At the same time, they also want to evaluate Okay, the capabilities of the team. As simple as, sekarang ni pun sama juga, okay. If you want to bid for a tender or for a project, one of the important things that they want to look at, basically, who are the board of directors or team members. You need to include the profile, okay. And after that, the business strategy. When we talk about the business strategy, so the evaluators or assessors want to look in terms of the innovation that you want to propose to them. Is what so different, what so unique, what so distinctive about your product. And then we also they also look in terms of industry contact because some industry they're quite booming. For example, when we talk about uh, 
industry 4.0, people are talking in terms of automated process, apps, for example, autonomous car. Okay, and, and oh, Nafal baru join. Tadi Nafal tak ada, eh? Okay, and then, apa, apa tadi? Uh, uh, for example, drone technology. Eh, have you participated in drone? Saya tak semak yang tu. Okay, drone technology. Nanti kita akan tengok. Okay, so basically, uh, this is actually showing to you the industry context, okay? And then the structure. So in terms of structure, that means how you develop your business. Is it in the lean uh, structure or perhaps in the very rigid structure? Okay, nowadays when we talk about startup, and then uh, we are moving towards lean startup. So that's the reason why it's not really weird, it's not really awkward if you actually see uh, some businesses, they, they don't actually, they, they, they don't really rent an office, what they are doing, they just um, operate the business at the co-working space, okay? That means rather than they, they need to set up a business, but they actually just rent a space at the co-working space or any kind of accelerator or incubator space for them to run the business. Because the most important part for them is just having, uh, basically the reason why they, they go to this kind of accelerator or incubator because they just want to make a network, okay? Indeed, they can simply do their job at home, okay? Because many of the work nowadays, particularly for tech startup that based on IT base, they can do their activities or their work and tasks simply at home, as long as they are connected to the internet. But uh, they actually decided, some of them basically go to this kind of co-working space or accelerator program. Uh, normally, the accelerator or co-working space ni. Uh, nanti saya ada baca satu tu whereby sekarang MDEC pun nak buat dia punya uh, accelerator in order uh, to encourage more networking among startup okay dia buat okay uh, sama juga contohnya kalau you tengok cerita Korea again cerita Korea dia ada this kind of what we call it uh, sandbox okay so even Malaysian government also preparing this kind of program okay okay so next uh, we discuss about talent structure and all of this Definitely, they want to see how much profit are you going to generate for the next few years. Okay, when you prepare the business plan, you cannot actually just project for one year. Normally for three years. Okay, at least three years because we want to see the potential of your business to grow. Okay, okay. so this is actually the first step process. Uh, uh, five step process, sorry, five step process for establishing a new venture. I don't want to actually elaborate more. Uh, you can maybe um, refer to the slide, but this is actually step by step. Identify and screen opportunities, refine the concept, determine the feasibility and prepare a mission statement. And after that, you prepare the complete business plan, we finance the plan, uh, determine the amount of financial, physical and human resources, and finally secure the necessary resources and capabilities. So having said that, so this is actually the processes of venturing into the business. Definitely, if you look here, preparing the business plan is part of it. Number three, kalau you tengok dekat situ. Number one, definitely you need to identify the opportunities. And after that, you try to develop this kind of concept and uh, vision and concept statement. And then you refine your punya vision statement and make sure there is a feasibility. Feasible, that means uh, you actually have the chance to grow the business. And after that, barulah you prepare the complete business plan. Okay. Once you completed the business plan, so you actually need to make sure that the business plan could be uh, realized, could be actually transformed into reality. So this is where you need to determine the amount of financial, physical and human resources. And barulah you secure that kind of resources. So this is actually the main important aspect that you need to do in order to establish a new venture. Okay, so stories. Okay, basically, in a business, uh, it's like uh, you're going to persuade the investors. You're going to actually persuade your customers. So having said that, selection of stories to tell to the respected audience are very important. Okay, stories are integral part of the process by which founders start and build new ventures, acquire needed resources, and generate new wealth. So how basically you create stories? Okay, kalau you tengok dekat sini, there are few guidelines, okay, that you can follow, okay, in order for you to create stories for your business. Sama juga, whether it's actually in writing or perhaps in verbal presentation, you still basically uh, need to acute, need to develop this kind of ability to tell stories. First of all, you need to set the stage. 
define the current situation, the current players, the current opportunities, and coherently and clearly. Okay? And then you start to introduce the dramatic conflict. Uh, so this is where, for example, you need to impose some kind of needs. Uh, sebab tu saya ada cakap so NABC, okay? So you actually want to, for example, when, when you want to introduce dramatic conflict, that means you're going to say that, for example, uh, this is actually the current problem experienced by the people, particularly in terms of health problem, in terms of environment. You should know how to tackle that. So people have started to think that, Oh, this is actually something that they needed. Okay, they need to, uh, to to solve this problem. So how are we? How are the customers or entrepreneurs or investors want to realize this? So this is where you start to reach a resolution whereby you describe. Okay, your your plan. Portray a coherent plan and describing how the venture can overcome the obstacle and succeed by following the plan. That means you started to uh, introduce the solution for the particular conflict. Okay, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, for example, um, siapa yang actually follow Apple punya product launching, normally that's actually the way yang Steve Jobs punya legacy. Dia akan pastikan, dia kata basically, when they launching the product, it's like they, 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 they're making like a stage performance. So how basically you want to persuade people that the technology that they, they, they introduce to their respected customers or people, basically something that uh, impactful. So that's the reason why kalau you tengok Apple punya product dia akan cakap this is the best ever smartphone. This is the best ever the most advanced uh, Apple Watch. They're going to say that this is the most advanced technology. They're going to highlight that in order to persuade the people. Okay? And then they give some kind of drama. Okay? Some, so this is actually the way that you can use uh, in order to persuade other people. Okay? Um, uh, to use or perhaps to 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 subscribe to your product, okay. And then I set up the exercise. Ni, we just go here. A business plan is document that describe the opportunity, product, context, strategy, team, required resources. Nanti saya akan bagi basically the guideline for your project. You can hantar the project and then the report going to contribute twenty percent, okay. That mean uh, for your assignment, ada untuk you punya project akan ada element of business plan. Okay, I'm going to share with you an example of previous semesters lah. Uh, yang ni, tak apa, you boleh tengok je. Basically, these are the main elements of a business plan. You need to remember, there is no standard way of doing a business plan. If you go to agency A, if you go to agency B, if you go to agency C, they might have different format. Okay, but what I'm trying to tell you so these are the most important element that need to be included in the business plan you need to have an executive summary why because uh, investors basically or bankers or finance provi providers they do not have much time to read the thick business plan you're going to start read your business plan through executive summary and then you need to highlight the opportunity quality and growth potential okay the vision mission objective and co concept. That means if you develop this kind of app, what basically the vision and mission and then what basically the core concept that you want to introduce. Okay? And then you go to the product or service. So this is very important for your product. You need to highlight the value proposition as well as the business model. You can simply use BMC or any kind of business model uh, framework. Okay? Definitely for your product, you, you must remember people want to see how it works. Okay? It's not just actually putting the picture of your product, you need to explain how it works. How it's going to solve the, the, the problem experienced by people. So you need to, to elaborate that. And then the context, industry, timeliness and regulation, that means to what extent you have complied to some regulation. For example, if you're running uh, what we call it, like autonomous car, tadi, you need to get approval from MOT. Okay, if you actually venture into health-based product, so definitely you need to get approval from namanya uh, Minister of Health ok contohnya the, the new vaccine you rasa siapa yang uruskan sekarang ni Malaysia actually uh, stated the commitment to buy Pfizer vaccine betul siapa yang uruskan this kind of process to get the product go to Malaysia and we use as our ni lah uh, uh, treatment for cure COVID-19 you rasa siapa yang uruskan this is quite interesting to discuss today 
गाइस मोस्टली ओनली द हां इंटरेस्टिंगली इट्स नॉट एक्चुअली सुपरवाइज्ड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हेल्थ इफ बाय मोस्टली कैन आई फॉर मोस्टली anyone can apa mosti why do you think that mosti is the one that niche uh, apa namanya uh, vaccine tu why uh, sebab mosti dia ada kepakaran untuk buat penyelidikan ya hmm okay what else okay uh, thank you for is your yang lain kenapa this is quite interesting it's not actually miss of how But okay, just want to know the process. You know what? We actually announced that we're going to buy. Uh, we're going to 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 have this kind of vaccine back in November, mid November, and then uh, just this week, um, the director uh, cakap kita masih tak boleh dapat lagi uh, kita punya vaccine. Most probably early next year. You rasa cepat ke lambat? They, we made announcement. Okay, we made announcement back in November, and then this week, uh, basically the Minister of Health, I uh, mean, just said that uh, the vaccine going to be delivered to Malaysia by next year. So, do you think it's actually fast or slow action? Anyone, guys, I want to get the feedback. Did you follow this kind of uh, what we call it progress for the vaccine to be delivered to Malaysia? Nurul Iza, I want to get your feedback. Okay, give scenario lah. Kita bukan apa. We actually announced since last November. Uh, Singapore just announced early of this month. Okay, Singapore. Singapore just early early this month. December they announced they're going to actually uh, what we call it. Um, buy Pfizer punya vaccine. You know when it's actually delivered to Singapore? It's yesterday. Dah sampai dekat Singapore. So, they, they announced lambat from Malaysia but they sampai laju daripada Malaysia. Why do you think that this kind of things happen? Anyone can give some feedback. You are technology management student kan? Why? I want to get your feedback. Bias? Is it? Okay, tak takpelah. Bias kenapa tu? Kenapa tu? Anyone? Okay, Izzah kata bias. It's very... Um, you can bagi justification lah. Kenapa you rasa bias? Singapore just announced early this month and they managed to deliver within this month, within three weeks, basically. Okay, Malaysia dah, dah announced bulan 11 and then like yesterday masih cakap lagi bulan 1 ke bulan 2 baru sampai. Next year. So why do you think that this process totally different? Even the product basically similar. We just actually... Uh, body double from Pfizer uh, punya vaccine. Anyone, I want to get your feedback. Anyone, come on. Give your feedback here. Atika Alia. Anissa is one is. Come on, I want to listen to your feedback. You rasa kenapa ni? This is very important kan, vaccine. Hello. Okay, hello, hello. Siapa di sana? Nak 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 request lagu ke? Tak, <laughs> tak. Saya nak cuba jawab. Okay, Atika, yes. Uh, saya rasa dia due to the kerana birokrasi di Malaysia. Okay. Or any, any political purpose macam tu. So, you know, Malaysia. Okay, uh, so Atika claim that the delay should be derived from, uh, what you call it? Birokrasi. Okay, bureaucratic process uh, due to the political punya things lah. Okay, Atika said that due to the uh, bureaucratic processes. So, what else? What do you think? Ay, Atika je yang lain Come on guys, think about. Think about this kind of thing. It's very big thing. I want to show to you how how... How slow our our response when it come to this? Farhan, Farhan. Yes. Sir. Farhan. Yes. Would you give some any? I think it's due to the rules and regulation. 
Okay, rules and regulation. Okay. What do you think? That means the rules and regulation basically uh, hinder the progress? Yes, doctor. Uh -uh. Okay, what else? What else? Anyone? Come on. The okay. proactiveness of country towards the vaccine. You can see Singapore, they are very proactive so they can get faster, but Malaysia... Uh, attitude is more not that proactive. Okay. Okay. Safety service for the people. Okay. Yeah. I think there are so many factors. Even myself, I couldn't actually uh, say that uh, what you've been said is wrong or right because I'm not pretty sure what basically impacted. Okay. The process, like you said, bureaucratic process, one part, and then a lot of rules and regulations to be followed by us, maybe. And then maybe like Chicken said that to ensure the safety and suitability for the people, most probably Singapore have more expert to handle the delivery and logistic of the vaccine, most probably. Uh, maybe you see Malaysia tidak mendaftar dengan platform pengguna vaccine global for vax. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pretty sure. Atika, is it true? Atika dah check eh? So most probably that's basically the reason we're quite slow in embracing this kind of urgent thing, okay, which is vaccine, okay? Um... Yeah, and then currently, I think we are facing more problem. Okay, because Singapore, they da, they da, they da, what we call it, uh, they're having this kind of problem. The, uh, basically, Singapore, the, the third wave happened earlier than us. During that time, if you read Singapore paper, they reach like almost 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 every day. And right now, that's happened in Malaysia. We're quite slow. I think the reason why, actually, this is my speculation. The reason why Singapore basically started having this kind of third wave because they, they're very proactive. They started to check every single people in Singapore. They went to this kind of foreigners' dormitory uh, facilities. You faham tak? That means they go to this kind of accommodation or service apartment that place uh, the foreigners, they went there. They're making the check. So that's the reason why, kalau you tengok, if you look at, at Singapore, uh, the second or third wave happened earlier than us. So during that kind of point of time, uh, the number of positive people in Singapore basically a uh, thousand like us right, right now. And sekarang Singapore dah control. Okay? But we just started. <laughs> That's actually, we quite slow to respond basically. Okay? It's not the pandemic basically the baru start ni. Sebenarnya we quite slow to identify this kind of thing. That's the reason why you nampak on berlaku lah dekat many clusters. And we are not so actually... Uh, even our community are not so really concerned much about this. For us, it's something that, what we call it normal. But please actually take care. For you young people, you're still young. Kala you actually affected by COVID-19, you still can cure. Normally, the one that much uh, or perhaps badly affected by COVID-19 are old people. Kalau dia atas 60 tahun, normally those people age 60 years old and above, they are very much affected, okay? Because the antibody is not so strong to uh, treat uh, the, the the disease, okay? So, tak apalah, kita pergi kat sini, the context, and then you, you need to have the strategy as well as the organization structure, culture, and talent. Okay, so when we talk about this, kita just continue. So, we continue the element whereby... Uh, you need to have the entrepreneur team, the capabilities and commitment, and then to put the financial plan, the required resources, uncertainties and return. And this is, has been uh, discussed uh, previous chapter. And then uh, make sure you also try to highlight ROI, that means what kind of the financial return. And finally, uh, the harvest. The harvest normally if you're targeting um, to convince the investors, return of cash to investors and entrepreneurs. That means we want to know in the next few years, how much money, how much uh, basically uh, revenue or income that could be generated by the entrepreneurs and investors. Okay? They can check again. Normally, kalau you go to this kind of angel investor, they want to see the evidence. They're going to ask you how many product have been sold, how much profit, even though you tak boleh pergi jumpa investor macam you tak ada apa-apa lagi, even just idea. They want to see some kind of track record. They feel convinced. And then from that, they're going to say that what basically your next action. How are you going to market your product? So having said that, after you have this kind of product or innovation or technology, so you need to know what's next. Okay? 
Okay, so we go here 10 common mistakes. I don't want to elaborate much, but you, as you can glance through here, for example, solution that you're looking for a problem, okay? That means this is the common mistake, okay? So basically, they want to know about more in terms of solution. Unclear or incomplete business model. Okay, so even when you prepare the BMC and value proposition, you must make sure that it's targeting the right people. For example, when we discuss about value proposition or VP. Okay, so VP, you support your punya customers. Okay, uh, if you're actually saying that, uh, for example, you want to provide healthy product of food, which is uh, to the villagers, okay, or they don't bother, don't care. Bukannya apa? Okay, because sometimes kalau kita nak beli organic food, contohnya, you you claim that, oh, you basically, your product organic food can be consumed by all people, which is, is not true. Because organic food is a bit expensive compared than the normal food. That means if you buy organic vegetable, for example, at the market, the price of organic vegetable basically lagi mahal. Ataupun you nak beli organic bread, you nak beli roti organic, okay? So if you want to buy organic bread, basically, it's, much more extensive and the chef life that means uh, the expiration date is very fast one or two days they that expired okay so that's actually the, the disadvantage of buying organic food okay incomplete competitors analytics and marketing plan inadequate description of uncertainty and risk you do not know sure yet what basically the risk that you're going to experience with, uh, in the future Gap in capabilities required of the teams. Okay, maybe lah macam tadi, kita nak beli vaksin, kita nak announce satu dunia bulan sebelas. Tapi maybe when it come to delivery and to handle that, we don't have the expertise. So that's why there's some kind of delay. Maybe that's actually our speculation. Okay, gaps, uh, inadequate description of revenue and profit drivers. Yes, you need to know. You cannot actually say something that you cannot achieve. Make sure is the revenue that you're going to project is something that reasonable. Okay, limited or no description of the method of the business. That means what basically could be measured in terms of the outcome from your business. Lack of focus and sound mission. Sometimes uh, this is something like, this is quite common among the young startup. They want to do everything. They're going to say that our company is going to solve the world problem. Whereby in operating the business is good if you if you can simply focus on one particular aspect and then after that kind of business successful so you start to venture into another uh, business area rather than you're going to say that we want to do this you want to do that we want to do so many things at the same time so that's totally uh, not really reasonable and going to consume a lot of energy and capital too many top-down assumptions, like we will get 1% share market share. So this is the reason why you need to use fact and statistic. How are you going to know the policy of a company? Most probably you can benchmark uh, with the big company, one part. And secondly, you can simply buy market uh, marketing analysis from the consulting company. A limited confirmation of customer demand or pain. Okay, uh, so this is actually the thing that you need to consider when you develop the business plan because business plan serve as the alignment tool for a new venture. For example, you need to know about the people, about the resources, opportunity and deal. Okay? So people is basically one of the basic things that people want to know. They want to know to what extent the talent that you hire for your business operations basically effective. Okay? So or able to conduct that kind of task. Okay, they're going to see who are the developers, who are the marketers, what basically the background of the directors, for example. And then in terms of resources, I think this is quite understandable. We're looking, we're looking in terms of financial, physical, intellectual um, resources. Okay, so and then second part, the opportunity, we discuss about who are our customers, how you're going to uh, approach your customers the strategy and the business model. So we want to know, for example, every company might have their own different strategy. Okay, uh, for example, when we try to discuss Domino's and Pizza Hut, what basically the main different Domino's and Pizza Hut? Guys, could you actually share with me? Saya tahu awak lapar, but I'm going to, to discuss about this so you boleh actually relate. What basically the main different business model or strategy uh, Conducted by Pizza Hut and Domino's. Anyone? Hey, 
Senyap terus. Guys, my question. Why basically the main difference of business model or strategy conducted by Pizza Hut and Domino's? Apa beza dia? Hello? 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 Ada orang kat, kat sana ni? Anyone? Tahu. Hello? Yes? Please provide the feedback. Can you listen? Can I, do, do you understand the question, guys? No file. Okay, I want to listen from no file. No file. Gosh, can I put some senyap ni? Zanita. No file. Hello. Guys, I actually repeat my question. Can anyone give the feedback? What basically the main difference between the business model by Domino's and Pizza Hut? When was the last time you went to these outlets? Pizza outlets? Still googling ala googling. Tak payah google google. Akmal, just give your opinion. Just give your opinion. Okay, Akmal. Feedback. Akmal. Akmal. <laughs> tak payah nak google lah. This is common sense. Do not need to google lah. Give your feedback Akmal. <laughs> Tapi rasa saya tak pernah pergi domino lah. Rasa tak tahu nak bisikan. <laughs> okay lah. Okay. Iqbal lah. Iqbal. Iqbal cakap price maybe. Macam mana tu Iqbal? Iqbal. Iqbal. Iqbal, explain please. Okay, uh, tak apa, you just answer lah. There's no right or wrong. Okay, the price is much more expensive for Domino's. Are you sure? Then pizza. Are you sure, Christopher? I'm not pretty sure. Um, I, yeah, I'm very, very sure. Uh, what you're saying is not really accurate. Maybe pizza hard. they can... Uh, their their restaurant is like designed for family dinners, but Domino is just like they are more on takeaway. So the tables and chair is like not high end compared to Pizza Hut. Very good observation, Hazel. Yes, basically the main difference. Okay, Domino's uh, focusing on delivery. Okay, take away like you said. So that's the reason why they have this kind of coupon and then they have more promotion. And Christopher, basically, uh, Domino's is much more cheaper lah sebenarnya than Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut lagi mahal sebenarnya. Okay, uh, so you, that's actually the difference. If you go to Domino's, the layout of the restaurant totally different. Even other Domino's tu pun, dia memang fokus on delivery. Pizza Hut cuba actually follow Domino's. Ada Pizza Hut Express ke apa tak ingat? Uh, PHD. Pizza Hut Delivery yang contoh. That's actually uh, yang dia buat. Dan juga actually yang Express. Kecil je. Ada yang, yang Pizza Hut kecil sahaja. Okay. They try to follow Domino's concept. Uh, that's actually showing to you the, the different lah. Okay. Tak apalah. Nanti I tahu you dah lapar. Tak boleh nak jawab soalan saya pun. Okay, and then the deal, reward, risk, incentive, ownership and harvest. Uh, tak apalah, ini kita dah already discuss. And then, uh, this going to be the last slide for today. Entrepreneurs can learn and master a process for building a new venture. And they communicate their attention by writing a business plan. That's the reason why. Okay, uh, basically, some entrepreneurs, if they, if they think that they do not need some kind of assistance from financial provider, ataupun from grant provider, they do not actually have to prepare the business plan. They can run by by itself. 
Tetapi, they need to scale up the business like we mentioned just now. In order to scale up the business, that's the reason why they need to approach investors. That's the reason why they need to prepare the business plan. That's the reason why they need money for expanding the business. Okay? So, in order to do that, they need to prepare the business plan. So, I think that's all for today. Any question, everyone? Adalan ke tidak ni? Okay, so today we cover chapter 6 and chapter 7. I really hope that uh, you get some kind of important aspect what has been discussed today. Apa yang kita belajar hari ni? Sebelum kita habiskan jam 11 ni, apa yang you boleh conclude? Fazli, I want to give you the conclusion. Fazli Idris, can you give conclusion what we have learned so far for today? Fazli, my name Fazli. Fazli. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, apa kita belajar hari ini? What basically we learn today? Business strategy? <laughs> no, not really. We learn two things. We are we learn two chapters. So what basically the thing that we learn? Fazli, dia unmute balik. Mute, eh. Hey, saya cakap tanya awak ni. Fazli, jawab. Fazli? Lah, terus senyap. Fazli. Okey lah, Faris. Faris Marijan. Faris. Faris Marijan. Faris. Yes, Doktor. So, what basically the thing, I mean the value or perhaps the content that we learn today? Ah... Uh, Business plan. Okay, what else? So what can you, just business plan. Saya bercakap lebih kurang one hour and half. Just the, the, the one that you answer, just business plan. Come on. I, I want more. Explain. Apa yang you belajar hari ni? Conclude. Make some kind of conclusion. What basically the thing that you learn from today's lecture. Uh, there was risk and regret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> risk and regret. Eh? Yeah. Okay, I give you, everyone, I give you 30 seconds right now. I'm, I'm going to just randomly. Please try to memorize. Please try to recall what we have learned. Takkan you sebut. You just simply said three words. Come on, guys. I'm talking for one hour and a half. And the, the one that you learned, just three words. My goodness. Okay, I give you 30 seconds to think of. I do not want the conclusion to be made within three words. I need to do it right. That's why I, I want to reply by, by using this kind of voice. Takkan you belajar risk and business plan. So, elaborate what basically the thing that you learn. May I try, doctor? Please. Okay, based on today's lesson, we learn about how, do, uh, how can we relate risk and handle manage risk. Uh, by mm -hmm. using the right business plan, business strategy, including things like economic of skills and also uh, mm -hmm. DMC and so on. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, barulah saya rasa you belajar, bukan you baca tiga patah perkataan, my goodness. Okay, anyone? Arfan, Arfan, come on. Apa you belajar hari ni? Arfan. Arfan? Yes. Saya yes. belajar pasal business plan. Explain. Saya belajar pasal business plan. Come on. Saya tanya budak tadi kau budak tadi kau tanya benda sama. First step to establish the business. Okay. Lagi? Yang tu ingat. You tahu tak, saya ada anak saudara yang tadi kau. Kalau saya tanya apa belajar sekolah hari ni, dia akan cakap eh, belajar ABC, apa saya cakap buat, jago nyanyi-nyanyi, nyanyi gini, nyanyi tu. You know what, we even kindergarten student can actually elaborate more than what you did. Come on lah. Hey, hey, come on everyone. Farah Arfan, explain lagi. Takkan tu dia belajar. Apa lagi? Penat, saya cakap satu jam setengah. Okay, nah, saya panggil, uh, I, I'm going to call Chikin Dayana. Please. Make conclusion. Conclusion tak kalah. Itu je you belajar penat saya membebel dekat sini. Chicken Diana. 
I want to get a very quality and solid reason from degree student, third year degree student. Shikin Diana, within this one hour and a half, what basically the, the thing that you learn? Shikin Diana. Oh my goodness. Something. Shikin Diana, can you listen to me, Shikin? Are you there? Chicken Diana. Chicken Diana. Come on. Chicken Diana, are you there? Calling for Chicken Diana. You need on 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 tapi you pergi mana ni? Anyone? Okay, saya panggil uh, next. Siapa? Hani Osman. Ani Osman. Hani Osman. Okay, Shikin Diana, answer back. Shikin Diana. Depan ni Hani Osman. Oh my goodness, what happened to this class? Hani Osman. Okay, other than Hani Osman, siapa nak try? Takkan saya nak kena panggil nama? Come on guys, third year student kot. Doktor, saya nak try? Please. Kenapa tak uh, cerita dia? Please, siapa nama awak? Wan Nazihah, okay please. Please Wan Nazihah. Okay. Apa yang saya dapat dari sini uh, sebagai usahawan macam mana kita nak handle uh, risiko yang uh, kita hadapi semasa COVID-19 ni? Di mana kalau okay, kita good, dapat good. Uh, handle risiko ni dengan lebih meluas, kita akan de- uh, dapat uh, return for our uh, business uh, dengan lebih baik. Hmm. Dan juga uh, kita kena tengok setiap uh, lima tahun dan ke atas, uh, ekonomi uh, cycles um, akan berubah di mana kita akan menghadapi ekonomi krisis dan juga uh, ki, uh, sebagai usahawan kita kena pandai uh, manage uh, perniagaan kita uh, di mana uh, risiko yang kita akan hadapi tu uh, kita akan dapat uh, susun dengan baik untuk perniagaan pada masa hadapan dan juga untuk the business plan ni kita dapat um, uh, susun uh, kita punya uh, opportunity, profitability, product, service dan lain-lain itu saya cerita Okay, tomorrow saya nak semua actually make conclusion what you have learned. Boleh? Okay, I will actually post dalam uh, what we call it. Uh, saya tak nak post lah nanti you 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 boleh baca balik. No, 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 no. Tomorrow I'm going to call one by one. Saya nak tahu apa you belajar. So, I'm, I'm, I'm very frustrated, you know. Uh, I mean, thank you very much, Wan Azhar. You actually the savior for today and few other study. Then the rest, come on lah. Actually asking you what you learn within one hour and one hour and a half, you just answer three words. Come on. You basically final year or third year degree student and then you need to actually uh, be more confident and equip this kind of skill. Okay, to elaborate. Could you imagine if you go to interview and then you answer three words? Come on lah, you find goodness. Boleh tak besok? Okay, tomorrow I'm going to ask everyone randomly. If this kind of thing happen, <sighs> something need to be done. Okay, and then tomorrow we're going to discuss about your test. We're going to actually have some tests and then I'm going to conduct through online as I mentioned before. Boleh? So I think that's all for today. I need to end right now because I'm having a meeting by right uh, pukul 11. Okay, so thank you very much everyone. I really hope that you guys actually assess back yourself yang pandai tak pandai nak menjawab tu. Okay, tomorrow kalau tak boleh jawab juga I'm not pretty sure what happened. Okay, so that's all. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, there's a go.